This is a lens that's ultra cheap, ultra small, and designed to replace the body cap on your camera when you don't have a traditional lens on your camera. For most APS-C cameras out there, it also makes those cameras pocketable when using this body cap lens as a lens. And it gives you an extra lens in your bag without taking up the space of an extra lens. And beyond the fact that this is so small, probably the other headline feature about the lens is how cheap it is. It can be had for well under $100. And when I say that, small and cheap, immediately you're gonna think that the image quality is going to be terrible. But actually, it's not. It's surprisingly good. So what is this lens? This is an 18 millimeter f6.3 body cap lens. And when I say it's an f6.3 lens, generally if I said something's an f4, or an f2, or an f6.3 lens, it means it's an f6.3 to sort of f22 or f16. In this case, the lens is so small that it doesn't have any aperture control whatsoever. So it's an f6.3 lens, and it just stays at f6.3. Now compared to a number of other body cap lenses out there, this lens does have the ability to focus. So it does have a focus ring, which is nice. And what that does is it allows you to get a much closer focus than you can with many of the body cap lenses out there that don't have the ability to focus. So you've got no aperture control, but you do have a focus control. So on an APS-C camera, what's 18 millimeters good for? Well, there's a range of different things. And I think being what I see as very much a travel lens, it is a great travel focal length. It's very much a traditional snapshot, wide angle snapshot focal length. Something where you're just going around, you see something interesting, you hold your camera up, snap, snap, snap. Not something you're trying to create some incredible art or you know, sort of blow out your background and get some crazy, creamy background portrait. It's really a, basically turns your APS-C camera into a point and shoot style camera. This actually makes it good for a range of things. And the first thing I think of is street photography. You're out on the street, you're gonna get a whole wide view of the world, but you're gonna get those people and the context of the scene that they're in. Now, this is going to be a wider focal length than is generally seen for street photography. So it's going to be more getting the whole street rather than focusing in on one person. But I think it gives a very interesting image and I played with it a little bit for street photography and I thought it worked quite well for that purpose. The other thing that 18 millimeters is surprisingly good for is architecture and cityscape. So if you get far enough back, you can get a very good photo of a city skyline. If you're in a city and around buildings and taking pictures of architecture and interesting elements and parts of buildings, Actually, 18 millimeters is nice and wide without too much crazy distortion, so you actually can get some quite good architecture shots. There is a tiny bit of barrel distortion that you could correct, but in all the photos that you've seen in this video so far, I am not correcting any of the distortion, so that's the way that they're going to look right out of camera. And for a lens that is so small and cheap, it's incredibly well built. It's just an all metal and glass lens. It has a metal lens mount. Interestingly, it does not come with any lens cap, so it just you just put it on your camera and this is it. And obviously there's no lens hood. It does have a focus ring, as I mentioned earlier, and that is really well dampened and really smooth. And actually it's quite easy to nail focus with this lens. This is an APS-C lens and it's available on all the popular mirrorless mounts. And I will put some links in the description down below to where I purchased the lens and the best pricing that I could find. And there was also free shipping on my order. I will mention that this lens was purchased as a batch of lenses. I bought every mirrorless lens under $100 and I'm going through and reviewing them lens by lens right now. So if that's something you're into, be sure to subscribe to the channel because I got a bunch more of these lenses coming up. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is distortion. I thought with a lens of this small and this cheap, particularly at 18 millimeters, we are going to get a lot of distortion. It's actually not the case. We just have a very, very mild amount of barrel distortion that is quite consistent. You could correct it in Lightroom or editing without any problem. But once again, all the images you've seen in this video have, be, have been uncorrected. What you will see is if you do have like a square object there or a uh, rectangle object and you get the edges close to the edge of frame, you will notice the bowing of the barrel distortion. But in most real world photos, you just won't notice anything. The lens does have heavy vignette, which is not uncommon for lenses of this type. Once again, not a deal breaker at the price point and for what we're talking about, but you will get heavy vignette. 
There's almost no chromatic aberration to speak of. I think in part that's because this is an f6.3 lens. So as you stop down any lens, you tend to get less chromatic aberration. So at f6.3, maybe it was easier for them to eliminate that. But I really couldn't find any chromatic aberration to speak of. The flare on this lens can get a bit crazy and you really need to watch it and you could use it for creative effect. Being a small fun lens, that might be something you wanna do, but in the wrong situation, it can ruin your photos and there is a fair bit of flare when using this lens. Having a look at close-up image quality, you can't get very close to your subject, only about 30 centimeters. This is a lot closer than most body cap lenses because as I said earlier in the video, this has the ability to focus, which a lot of body cap lenses have no ability to focus. So this will focus down to 30 centimeters, which a lot of the other body cap ones are a meter or more. And when you do, the image quality is actually excellent. Is There's a lot of sharpness and a lot of detail. So even though it's a not close, close focus, when you do focus as close as the lens can, the image quality is excellent. Now, the thing that was probably most surprising about this lens is the sharpness and detail I was getting out of it. This is when we're avoiding the flare because the flare can desaturate the image and take away some of the contrast. But when I nailed focus with this lens in the right situation without stray light coming in and giving some flare on the lens, we got a very sharp and detailed image and I was particularly impressed with it. I will mention that I have seen another video where someone was viewing the same lens and they didn't think that, that the lens was very sharp. So I don't know if there is variation between different copies of the lens, which is possible, or maybe they had an early release version of it. But I can tell you my copy is surprisingly sharp for a lens of this size and price point. When it comes to bokeh at 18 millimeters and f6.3, there really isn't much to talk about because it's very difficult to get any sort of out of focus background. But when you do, it's pleasing and not distracting and nothing that I would worry about. And ultimately I have to ask, who is this lens for? I think this is a lens for somebody looking for something that's a bit of fun, takes up no extra space in your camera bag, and makes your APS-C camera borderline pocketable for a very, very small price. So I think if that is you, I could not recommend this lens highly enough. Now, buying a new lens is only one way to improve the quality of your photos or videos. And I've just thrown a video on screen now. I think this is the best tutorial I have ever done on photography. And I'd be very surprised if you watched that video to the end and you weren't a better photographer at the end of that video than you are right now.